Hello everyone. Good evening. I hope everyone is doing great. Okay. So today we are going to see another topic from the report definitions join. So I have already covered the join using class join and index join and also associations. Okay. I'll attach that video link in this video. Okay. And today we are going to to learn sub report. Okay. So sub report when we use sub report. So sub report we use when we have to do a kind of a complex reporting like from the let's say from the second table we want to exclude some data or we want to include some data okay so that kind of a scenario we use sub report when we have a complex reporting and we are not able to do with one reporting okay but today we are going to see a very simple report using sub sub reporting okay so the requirement is the simple that get the all the list of operator id and how many cases are assigned to them okay so using first report what we are going to do here is to get the all operator list and from the second report we are going to get all the counts of their cases okay from their work list or we can say that assigned as work basket so that is the simplest one which we are going to see so let's just go into the pega and see how we can do that so i'll be doing end to end i'll be creating a two uh, like rule set here and, and i'll show you if you come here in PDN also, this is what it is saying. Commonly use, um, commonly we use sub report to satisfy complex requirements. Like you can use sub report to filter results. This approach allows to include or exclude data. You can also use sub report to display aggregate calculation and specific rows in a main report. Okay, so this is what we are going to do. The last one. Okay, we are not going to include or exclude that kind of a scenario. We are not going to take. We are just going to take. So in the second report, we are going to aggregate okay based on that like how many cases case count okay each users have open like in their work list and in the main report we are going to display that count so this is where we are going to use the sub report so let's go ahead and, and do it so the first things which we are going to do is we are going to create a report okay in data admin operator id class okay so let's go ahead and do that so we'll go to report and create report definition is count by user so basically we are trying to fetch the case count per user okay and so we are going to do it in data admin operator id class data admin operator id class so this is the class which we are going to use so as i mentioned okay As I mentioned from the first class, which we are going to just simply face the uh, operator ID. Okay. And from the second report, we are going to face the count. Okay. So to fetch the operator count, like operator uh, uh, name. Okay. Just we need to include PY user identifier from this table, PY user identifier. So this will give that the operator ID. Okay. So this is it. Just, we are not going to do much. Okay. So let's run it and see what we are getting from this report. So you can see that from this report, we are getting that operator ID. Okay, that's it. Okay, we are not getting the count as of now because count we are going to take from the from the sub report. Okay, so from the sub, now what we want is against each of these, we want to like, let's say this user, how many cases is open for this user, how many cases is open for this user. So that is what we are going to do. So this is the simplest report. Okay, uh, like, but in your projects, maybe you need to include more columns or maybe you need to include more things. Okay, but here I'm going to do simple things. So you can select PY username as well for full name, but most likely I'll not have the data. Okay. So I have the data also PY full name. Okay. And besides that we are going to display. So let's say you want to display operator ID, his name, email address, and then how many case count open. Okay. So those kind of uh, things can come in your real time projects. Okay. Now let's go ahead and create another report. So this time definitely we are going to create that report in assigned as work list class because we are going to fetch, um, the open case count okay for each user so again open case count so i say open case count and this time we are going to create an assigned as work list open case count one i'll just keep because i have already maybe created so that's it Okay, now here what we are going to do, okay, 
we are going to basically we need to get the count for per like how many cases is assigned so you know th th there is a property called px assigned operator so if any case is assigned to that if any case is assigned to any user okay to their work list the property which holds the operator id details is px assigned operator so if we get the count of that one means that i have if i have three cases means that there should be three item in the table okay where the the value of px assigned operator is my name okay so if i'll quickly show you the instances of assigned as work list and show you that xml assigned as work list so this these things you need to understand when you are reporting right so junior mostly ask this kind of a question is that how do you know that you have to add px assigned operator so with experience you learn that but at the same time so you need to see what all uh, details you have so let's say if i don't know what i can do is that i'll open this assigned as work list instance, instances and here if i see that px assigned operator holds that that which so you can see that px assigned operator so if in this table in this table if px assigned operator has 10 okay 10 cases here if you see admin is there right so at there are like 10 admins okay for the px assigned operator means 10 cases assigned to this admin okay so that is how we need to understand so what i'll be doing here is that i'll i'm going to add the px assigned operator and take the count okay so if i take the count that means that many cases is assigned to that user okay so i'll take the count okay so it will what it will do it will summarize and give the count so let's run that okay per user so it's giving total 344 okay so this is the total count it is giving but what we want is that we want per operator okay so to do that per operator what we need to do we need to add that that user id also okay so px assigned operator so here we just gave the count this time what we are going to do we are going to add operator id as well okay and then here we can say that case count so now this time what will happen the first we will get the operator id and then in the next column we will be getting the count so see here we got the operator id so total here we have an uh, like 344 but admin 1 is assigned with 249 admin uh, sorry admin 249 admin 149 and then list goes on okay so now we got this count okay so here you can you can question that okay that if i'm getting from here only okay why do i need the another separate report so as i'm saying so this is just for a poc but this scenario can also happen that this table will only give you the case count okay uh, okay for those users who have some cases let's say that in your applications okay there are like 500 operators in that 500 operators like 300 operators doesn't have work okay so that it won't include okay so depending on your scenario okay here i'm just trying to explain you okay but depending on the scenario you need to see that what kind of a join or like what kind of a design approach you are taking so this is where that the questions comes being be into the interview or like you need to uh, consider before creating a report that which type of join you are taking okay and when you are taking a join first you need to see that which report is giving which report is uh, making your business requirement okay satisfying your business requirement and then after that you need to consider the performance and other things as well okay so you can generate the query and see that okay that uh, which one will give me the best performance because the report is one of the main concern of the report is that it, it can it can be slow okay, so that you need to consider so now we created both the report okay now our job is to display the, this data also in the the previous re report okay so now what we'll be going to do we are going to join this table okay using sub report okay so we are going to join another table okay signed as work list using this sub report okay open case count one okay so now we'll we'll be going to data access tab and try to join uh, this table at uh, uh, this report okay with our another report from where we are getting the count of the open cases for each operator okay so what we are going to do here in sub report we need to come and we will give some label here as okay let's say just give something is and then class we are going to select assigned as work list and then in place of report name we are going to give open count okay now here so we want to join okay so operator id so operator id is from the second table if you see so this is the op uh, operator id okay px assigned operator so px assigned operator holds that the py is identifier from the first table okay so it can act as a foreign key px assigned operator so here we are joining with px uh, py identifier now okay so this is done and the next thing is do not 
match rows. So what we need to select here is include all rows in the main report. So if I'll do that, what will happen is it will include all the operator ID from the first table and whatever the data we are getting from the second table. Okay. So what, let's say that you have a 20 operator, which and from the 20 operator, you have only 10 operator have some work. So what will happen if I'll select these options, we'll get all 20 and and the count will be only available for those five or, for, or 10, whoever have the work, okay? And include all rows in the sub report so that like we can try what, what we are getting. So, and include all matching rows from the both the reports. So if I'll select, then we will only get those operator who have some work, okay? So let's try that one and where you'll use the sub report. So columns to include, so that we need to select, okay? Because we are going to use in a column, okay? To display that, okay? So let's submit this one. And now we are going to try and add this to column. So if I'll run, it won't make any difference. Okay. So if I'll run, we can see that, okay, only the matching one we are getting. Okay. Before join, if you remember, we were getting all the list. Okay. So if I'll go here and change this one to include all in main report and I'll run. Okay. Then we'll be getting all the operator ID. See all the operator ID. Still, we are not getting the count. So for getting the count, let's add that also that column. So we are going to add a dot. So see, we are getting it in the drop down case count. Okay, so just we'll add that and now we'll run that. Okay, so if you see here, we are getting the case count. Okay, or we are getting all the operator ID and only guess getting the case count from the table of uh, second table, which have some cases. Now, let's say if you don't want that the, the, the IDs, okay, who don't have any work. So what we can do is that we can select include only matching rows from the both report. Okay. So now if I'll run, okay, we will not be getting those cases. So those IDs, okay, so you can see that only we're getting those ID who have some work. So this, these all things will depend, okay, what kind of requirement you have, okay. But you should try to have this kind of a things only where you are using equijoin, okay. Or that like, uh, this, these all options make sense, like, like, uh, it, like it kind of a converts to left join, left outer join. So those kind of a things, database, database stuff. Okay. So you can analyze the query a little bit here. Okay. And based on the requirement also you can select. Okay. Because sometimes uh, it's not that only you need to see the performance things. You need to see the requirement as well. Okay. What business is asking. So let's uh, select the other option, include all rows in the main report. So if I'll be selecting again, we'll be getting all. And then if I select, uh, the other one then i'll be just getting uh, all the uh, operator id from the second one okay so we'll be getting only who have some work okay so as as i said it translate to what kind of a join okay so here after making these changes and if you trace and and in the tracer you can see that query that what kind of a query it is generating okay so then you'll be able to understand and analyze that okay so just to see i'll maybe I'll, I'll show you for one so in settings you need to enable that db query okay to see that okay so db queries looks like already enabled so if i'll quickly run we can see that so let's first see that what kind of a options we have selected and for that what we are getting it so here we have uh, include all rows in the sub report okay so let's see that for this one this options what kind of a join we are getting let's quickly run this it should be right, right outer of some right outer or something. Let's see that even I didn't remember, but let's see that. So data admin, uh, what kind of a join it is doing. So this is the query. We can see that see right outer join it is doing. Okay. If I'll change it, okay, then it will, it will behave differently. Okay. So this you need to analyze as I'm saying and, and depending on your business needs, okay, you need to uh, tweak that, okay. But overall what you need to do, create two report, okay, come to sub report things and, and, and join, okay, based on your conditions, whatever conditions you want, okay. And then how you want to use that, that the output of from the second report, okay, that you can, you can use it depending on your requirement as like for me, it was just simply I wanted to display so that I did it, okay. So it's a very simple try. Okay, usually many people like try to run away from this sub reporting things, but if you try, it, it's not that difficult. Okay, so let's try and let me know if you're facing any issue, I can help you with that. So that's it for today's class. Thank you. Thank you very much. Have a good day. Bye.